Hey guys, welcome to a bonus Tuesday videos. So old workstation parts like Xeon processors, Nvidia Quadro graphics cards or ATI Fire GL graphics cards, they can often be had for less than the desktop equivalents. For example, everyone is chasing i7s and fast GeForce and Radeon video cards, but flying under the radar are old workstation parts that are not only good for gaming, but if you pick older parts, they are also excellent for Windows XP retro gaming. So this is the setup that we're going to use today. It's an LGA 2011 motherboard. These come out brand new from AliExpress. We have been using this motherboard quite a lot in recent videos and I did a full review. So I'll put a card up on the screen for you to uh, check out if you want to know more about it. But the highlights are we're getting a ton of PCI Express slots, M.2, quad channel memory and there are a ton of really interesting processes for socket 2011. Underneath the first PCI Express slot it does mention two-way SLI and Crossfire X but I'm a little bit skeptical so we will find out soon if this is actually working. If you're looking for a fast CPU for Windows XP gaming project, Socket 2011 has you covered. Firstly you can go with an unlocked processor. A good example is the 1650 that's a Sandy Bridge processor with four cores and that's uh, great. You can overclock it to around four gigahertz so you will have plenty of performance. I went with the 1650 V2. This one is from the Ivy Bridge generation. It's not unlocked but it runs at a fairly healthy 3.7 gigahertz all core turbo. It is basically the equivalent to the i7-3770 um, but it does have more cache. We have 10 megabytes of level 3 cache and we also get uh, quad channel memory with speeds, uh, supported memory speeds up to 1866. Now Windows XP with four memory sticks that's way too much RAM to be usable. Um, it shouldn't be an issue. I'm using 8 gig of RAM at the moment and Windows XP will just ignore the uh, excess RAM. So basically I'm using a dual channel configuration but if you want the ultimate performance you can go with a quad channel memory kit uh, running at 1866. So the Windows XP installation was pretty straightforward. I'm using a 120 gigabyte SSD and in the BIOS I've got the AHCI SATA mode enabled. I'm using easy to boot. Uh, I've done a tutorial on that that lets you install Windows XP from a USB flash drive and that worked pretty well. You can press F11 on these Chinese motherboards to access the boot menu. To install all the drivers I'm using the snappy driver installer. It's like a 14 or 16 gigabyte download onto a USB hard drive and then you've got all the drivers offline that worked really well. And I'm also getting the latest uh, NVIDIA drivers and the latest Radeon drivers directly from the AMD and NVIDIA websites. So first we're gonna try these two video cards in SLI. These are Quadro FX cards, specifically Quadro FX 3450 and I looked up the specifications on Tech Power Up and it appears that these are 6800 GS graphics cards. So quite old school. Um, and yeah, SLI connector is at the top and we've got an SLI bridge. They both need a six pin power connector each. But yeah, in terms of hardware, it was no issues. They showed up uh, in device manager just fine. And then also uh, GPU said we can see both cards. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, NVIDIA driver does not offer the option to enable SLI. So the description on the motherboard was a bit too optimistic. Uh, it seems like they haven't paid for the NVIDIA SLI license. So next up, I had to try a few uh, hacked drivers to see if I can get SLI working and a couple of projects floating around. The first one is called uh, Different SLI Auto but it seems that, that this project is more for more modern operating systems like Windows 7 and 10. Uh, it just wouldn't work under Windows XP at all. I also found a SLI patch from Guru 3D uh, also no luck unfortunately with that and finally I tried Hyper SLI and again, also no luck. Uh, I did try a few uh, NVIDIA drivers, some older versions and so on, but eventually, yeah, I just couldn't get SLI to working, which is a real shame. Now, if you out there are watching this and you know a way to get SLI working under Windows XP uh, on motherboards that do not have a SLI certified chipset, do let me know. Um, I would love to get this to work.
So with SLI not working, I didn't really have much for a video and I already invested a bit of time um, putting everything together, installing Windows, it takes quite a bit of time. So the next step was trying out Crossfire and I've got these two low profile graphics cards. These are Radeon 7470s and they came with a Dell Optiplex. Um, yeah, it had two video cards installed, which surprised me. Um, usually if um, sellers sell these OEM machines, they pull out the graphics cards and sell them individually. But mine came with two of these video cards. Um, I believe these are, yeah, Dell OEM graphics cards. And uh, yeah, Crossfire worked, so that's a, that's a positive. Uh, the driver installation was a little bit uh, weird on the AMD MD website, the latest uh, Radeon driver is 14.4 but the XP installer will not work also to make it more confusing there are three individual driver packs and I believe the second driver pack was the one that worked and what you have to do is install the driver first to get the uh, control center and a few other bits and pieces and then you need to manually install the drivers through device manager and then after reboot I got a message do I want to enable crossfire Absolutely, so we now have working Crossfire, so now we can have a look at some games. So the first game is a real classic Need for Speed Underground. This game has a capped FPS uh, of 60 and it seems to run pretty smooth at first glance, but uh, if you look closely every now and then the game seems to, and although the fraps counter shows 60 FPS locked. Um, every now and then it's, it seems to run like at half the frame rate or something like that. It's, it's a weird effect and that might be micro stuttering going on. Um, so it's not as smooth as it should be. We are getting decent FPS but every now and then um, the frame rate just doesn't seem 100% smooth. But uh, in terms of performance it runs the game fine. We're running a 1280 by 1024 and I have enabled all the details. The next game is another classic, Far Cry, also at 1280 by 1024 All the details maxed out, including ultra water reflection details. And this is a game that can be yeah, quite demanding on the processor. So if you're building a period correct Pentium 4 or Athlon 64, it can be a real challenge for the CPU graphics card uh, also, of course. And yeah, it seems to run quite well at first. Uh, the two video cards in Crossfire configuration do a fairly good job. But as we keep playing, um, every now and then the performance really tanks. So not quite sure what is going on here. Well, very likely it's a driver issue or maybe the two cards just run out of resources. But yeah, um, one moment it can be a silky smooth over 60 FPS and then uh, the performance just really tanks below 20 fps even so yeah another game where crossfire doesn't seem to work that well with uh, these old games half-life 2 is the next game here i'm not noticing any issues 1280 by 1024 all details maxed out and seems to be running silky smooth so half-life 2 is also a good test for windows xp retro gaming pcs this is the steam version so it's uh, updated and more demanding keep that in mind if you're comparing it with older versions we also have fear this is one demanding game for windows xp retro gaming pcs i do remember when it came out and i actually had to play at a fairly low resolution it was very demanding on the video card once again 1280 by 1024 all the details are maxed out but uh, no soft shadows and no empty aliasing these two settings can be extremely demanding and we're seeing a similar issue like in far cry where sometimes it runs pretty well but then the performance for some reason just yeah gets really bad so that's another game where these two video cards in crossfire don't seem to have enough power to run the more demanding windows xp games and i also had a go at trying halo so 1280 by 1024 also all the details maxed out and this is a game that seems to be running quite well now this is an empty map just me cruising around so not the most stressful test but yeah it seems to be running fairly smooth and yeah halo definitely uh, is holding up nicely and in a LAN game it's heaps of fun um, it's just a shame that it's hard to obtain I had to buy a, a used copy on eBay basically um, that doesn't seem to be a digital version for sale of Halo. So Crossfire didn't work out that well. Uh, it does work and we do get decent performance but in quite a few games we saw issues. Either the performance 
uh, would suddenly just yeah disintegrate and uh, it would perform really um, poorly or like in uh, Need for Speed Underground uh, some kind of weird micro stuttering going on so um, finally I want to try another Radeon this is a Fire GL it's the V7700 this is the workstation equivalent uh, of a Radeon 3000 series not, not exactly sure which model but Radeon 3000 for Windows XP plenty of power and we can see it in the games I only tried Far Cry and what a difference we're getting uh, consistent frame rates and silky smooth also all the settings are maxed out 1280 by 1024 so it seems that with yeah playing um, building a Windows XP uh, retro gaming PC out of workstation parts um, the same principles apply um, if you have a single fast card that is usually the way to go and yeah Crossfire didn't work out that well, uh, neither did SLI, we couldn't even test it because of the lack of SLI license. Um, hope dies last, so I do hope that one of you has a, a tip for getting SLI to work on these um, machines under Windows XP, that would be awesome, because finding a retro motherboard that is SLI certified and has full 16x lanes in SLI yeah, they're actually pretty hard to find and they're not that cheap and most of them take an Athlon 64 or a Core 2 and those are nice processors but if you want something faster from the Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor yeah they're not that easy to find so these Chinese motherboards could fill a nice little niche for people like me who want to benchmark and uh, yeah, try old cards and push them to their limits, but also use an old operating system like Windows XP. So guys, there you have it. Using old server parts and workstation parts, you can build a nice Windows XP retro gaming PC. And now we have another option, Socket LGA 2011. So I know a lot of you are building uh, XP machines with like a Pentium 4 or Socket 775. And we also have a lot of uh, AMD projects, for example, the uh, Athlon 2 and the Phantom 2. Those are really good options. But now we have another option, old server parts on LGA 2011. And having more choice is never a bad thing. And if you look around, these workstation cards, ATI Fire GL, or NVIDIA Quadro, they do fly under the radar a little bit, so you should be able to get a better deal compared to buying the equivalent uh, consumer card. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. So I shall see you soon with our Friday video, but do keep an eye out for Tuesday. Sometimes we have a bonus video like this one. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.